These are the compression fittings that come with the water-cooled spindle. They're intended for a quarter-inch inner diameter tubing, but extremely thin wall. I assume it's like tie tie-gon tubing that's extremely flexible and thin-walled. Um, I have some vinyl tubing, but it was actually too th too thick wall to even go on there, um, and so it definitely doesn't match the uh, the three eighths inch inner diameter tubing that I bought for the water cooler. So I went ahead and purchased these brass fittings. So these fittings have uh, M8 one by one point zero threads to match the uh, spindle. And then a 3-inch three, three barb. It doesn't change the reality that that essentially you're still going from a 3-8-inch tube down to less, probably a little less than a quarter. So this will be the rate limiting or choke point for the flow. Uh, but it is what it is. And so I think I'll be swapping these out. It is going to be a dissimilar metal, so I'll probably definitely be using a, some type of thread dope. Probably a liquid one rather than Teflon. Um, you can kind of see the threads there. So, nevertheless, I think it'll be a better solution than, than keeping those compression fittings. Alright, so I'm going to fill up this cooling system with liquid now. I'm um, not going to use anything fancy, I'm just using uh, distilled water. I have this Nalgene bottle, which is going to help me measure how much goes in. So yeah, the technique was basically to take this tube off at this point. This is sort of the high point of the system. And then I inserted this funnel. And then keeping everything high, uh, I just slowly filled this uh, with water. Um, I also took off this uh, cap to make sure that when the fluid entered the reservoir I would at least know about it and then I kept a little tray underneath here so that when it finally dribbled out of this then uh, then I stopped. Um, and so the total volume, let's see, maybe it'll stop, I guess somewhere between seven, 700 and 800 mils of water in into that system so it's not too big it's obviously this five and a quarter dry bay type reservoir and then tubing so basically it comes out out here uh, basically comes down it will be pumped into the uh, the spindle and then immediately returns and then right out of the spindle it goes into this temperature sensor so uh, we'll know how hot the water's getting and then it goes straight up to the radiator the water's cooled and then returned to the reservoir where it's essentially continuously pumped so we'll see how that works so we've got uh, coolant in the cooling system and so now we're ready to turn on the system and uh, back here at the controller, I probably didn't provide an update. Um, at some point I've added this uh, relay, it's a uh, solid state relay. It's rated, uh, I think, 3 to 200 volt DC and up to 12 amps. And so I think that pump is 3 amps max. Uh, so it's probably overkill. But anytime the, the spindle is commanded on, that relay will turn on sending 12 volts uh, to the pump and so that just comes over here and then to this uh, terminal block and it supplies 12 volts to the to the pump as well as the cooling fan up there and then this buck regulator uh, is also fed in and it takes it down to 5 volts to run the temperature sensor and so if we come over here I'm gonna submit uh, M3 command Turn that thing on. So the spindle comes on, and now the temperature sensor here is booting up. Um, it has this little button, and if you click it, it switches between the display modes. There are three of them. I don't think any one is particularly better than any other. Uh, this is the one I like the most. Um, 
pretty much, I do not see on any of the displays any indicator that the fluid is actually moving. Um, some temperature sensors seem to have that feature, this one does not. Uh, it also looks like we cannot switch to Fahrenheit, so it looks like we're stuck with Celsius, which is fine. Uh, it does say in the documentation that the movement of the water in the block is uh, non-directional, so you can have the water flowing in either direction. But I do know for a fact that the, the actual con electrical connector is very polar. It's meant to plug into a motherboard, and so I do not believe there's any uh, polarity protection on this board. So if you get the polarity wrong, you'll probably blow it up. Basically, when the power comes on for the pump, it also turns on this temperature sensor. And so that's, that's important on this system because that temperature sensor really is the only window I have into the system that the, the cooler, the pump is running. So like right now, the pump is running. I totally cannot hear it. Um, I know it's running because I can feel the vibration when I touch the back of the motor. Uh, this, this fan up here is actually louder than that, that pump. Um, and so, without that temp sensor, I, I won't know. Certainly when the spindle is turned on, I won't be able to hear anything, that's for sure. So, we'll see. I still do not know how much heat the spindle is going to produce nor how much heat this cooling system can dissipate. So it's going to be interesting to, to see how, how hot or not hot this thing gets.